Hi, Hello, mate. Hello, mate. Hello, mate. Hello. Nice to see you. Cheers, bud. So, yeah, cheers, everybody. Cheers. <laughs> Is there a Welsh word for cheers? I don't know. I'm scared to say it in this pub, okay. in case we offend anyone. <laughs> <laughs> We're in Wales. We're in Cardiff. Yeah. Cardiff city. Capital. We are. We are inside in the castle. One of Cardiff's oldest pubs. Um, we're in the Goat Major. And that is a... Is, is it that goat or is that an actual military rank? No, I, I think it's... Well, there's pictures of a major with a goat on the wall. Um, that's as much as I, I know it's a big rugby kind of pub in Cardiff from having been a student here. You might Google it. Um, but it's, it's a Brains pub. And there are a few Brains pubs, obviously with Brains being a Cardiff-based brewery. Um, the Goat Major is one of the main Brains pubs in... Well, the Royal go. Regiment of Wales is an infantry regiment. Yeah. Um, and it has a mascot of the goat. Okay. And the goat mascot and the goat major. So the goat major is a military rank and the goat mascot is a regimental goat. There you go. Yeah, right. Very clever. The soldier in charge of the mascot is styled as the goat major. Right. And he's a corporal, despite being named a major. It's a bit weird. Oh. There you go. There you are. There you are. Oh, I, I like the castle here. Look around. We yeah, we're tour around. Literally it. over. It's at the end of City. No, it's the end of St Mary Street, isn't it? So it's literally right at the end of, on the um, on Castle Street, looking over Castle Street. Nice. Do you like a nice castle? Mm. What's your favourite castle, Jen? Mm. Um, I know you don't do favourites generally. No. Uh, probably because I can't remember things. But we went to. Uh, I went to a cool castle, Tintagel Castle okay. in Cornwall. Cornwall, yeah, that was quite cool. Very good. Um, and I went to one in Switzerland, which is really cool. So it was like a, almost like an island on its own. Okay. I can't remember what it was called now. That's some fancy French Swiss name. Yeah. A very nice arty picture of it. Maybe maybe I'll find it and put it on get you to put it on the podcast. Hmm. You you're drinking something different. I am. It's um, it is cider, and it is one of my favourites. Oh, why is cider? Well, yeah, I, I agree. But I'm sure the, some purists who disagree. No, I know. It's um, because it ain't made of apples. It's <laughs> well, sure, surely there are still apples in it somewhere. Probably. Um, it's Stouffer Press, <laughs> and it's mixed berries. So I've never had mixed berries Stouffer Press before, but it's very nice. Doesn't yeah. taste of apples yet. No, yeah. it still tastes of berries. <laughs> taste of berries. Yeah. So um, it's it's nice, it, it is like fizzy Ribena, so it's like right, drinking. Cheers. Drinking. And what have you got? I've drinking. got, I'm gone for one of the local, I mean, we've got a lot of choices. No. Say brains, 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 no, brains, 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 brains. Or nothing else. So I've gone for brains gold, which looks looks creamy. It certainly looked creamy as it was settling. And, uh, it is creamy. Um, yeah, slightly, slightly nutty, I would say. Nutty. But only very, very faintly. Creamy, light, not too cold. Sort of room temperature, a little bit blue. Yeah, it's nice. Yeah, yeah. definitely drink that. Drink cool. And um, we're not just cheering, cheersing ourselves today. No. Cheersing some of our patrons. We have some patrons. Yeah. We have some followers. Um, who you know who, who have almost bought us a virtual pint? Well, they have. Yeah, they, they mm. donated some money to buy us a pint. So we're, we're raising our glasses to Greg Pitcher in New Zealand. Greg, Cheers, thank Greg. You, thank you, Greg. And we're not quite sure how to pronounce this. David Gentry, we believe, could be Gentry, but we're going for David Gentry. And thank he's you, Dave. In, he's in Georgia, in uh, Atlanta. The US. Atlanta, Georgia. Yeah. Well, Atlanta's a city. Georgia's uh, a state. We so don't, don't know where it is. Atlanta. It's a big place. Cheers. Cheers, Dave. Cheers, Dave. Yeah. Cheers. Anyone else? Um, well, we'll save that for the next one. Okay. Yeah, maybe we'll, we'll cheers more on the next drink, maybe. Maybe the next, the next round. Drink, maybe the next round, yeah. So that's good. So yeah, if anybody wants to, to join in, become patrons, you get exclusive episodes. We're, we're also recording these videos now, so you can see the video as well. But yeah. You can see be able to see. You can see the colour of my red height. Mm. Mm. Be able to hear unreleased episodes. Yeah, there's quite some exciting feature. We've got some outtakes and stuff, haven't we? And some of the stuff that never quite made the uh, the cut yeah. that we're going to release. 
Yeah, and and our, our patrons will be invited to patron only podcasts. There are, yeah, yeah, exclusive. Anyway, so we're we're in Cardiff, working together again. We are product turning course this week. Yeah, what day is it? Today is Tuesday. Tuesday. These days tend to blur into one of them. You're struggling, aren't you? I can tell. There's te- points today where you were clearly flagging. Do I look tired? <laughs> tired eyes. Big baggy eyes. Yes. How's the lack tired. of sleep getting to you? Yeah, it's, it's accumulating. Is it? It's accumulating. Um, yeah, a little bit, little bit of less sleep every I rem- day. I remember I texted you the other day and I said, "How are you doing?" Something like that. And you just said, I genuinely don't know how to answer that question anymore. That was your response. <laughs> you know it's bad when I don't know I don't know how I feel. Yeah. Yeah, I'm I'm, I'm tired. And you were asking me some questions this morning and I <laughs> just couldn't put, pull the fragments of information together in my brain. I've got a clue. So yeah, you d- you, d- you get you get stupider, don't you, when when you're not sleeping. Tell us funny things to you, and it's a, there's a, I think we've mentioned this before, or I've certainly talked about this in the course before but the correlation between tiredness is the, bre- the, the effect it has on the brain is very similar to the effect that alcohol has on the brain oh really the brain. Yeah. see I reckon the alcohol I think makes me smarter <laughs> <laughs> alcohol counteracts the tiredness for me but they say like driving the, the equivalent of driving at four o'clock in the morning when your brain's tired is the equivalent of, yeah, I can of being under the influence of alcohol when you're driving so it's just as bad mm. okay. it does funny things to your brains it lowers your IQ, doesn't it? Yeah. As well as um, your ability to process and rationalise and compute things. Is, is it something like you drop an IQ point for every hour sleep you lose under eight hours a day or something like that? Yeah, I can, something I can like believe that. that. I know if you're stressed, that's another factor as well. If you're in a highly stressed state, your IQ drops by about 20 points. Yeah. Which is one of the reasons why you can't coach people if they're in a stressed state. Is that right? To bring them back into competency mode. Yeah. Because they can't reflect, they can't rationalise very well. It's you, tunnel vision. So you've had to kind of, you had to ever had to like cut a conversation? Yeah, yeah just, just, just so take the time to This isn't the right time to do this. Well, because sometimes, but yeah, some, equally sometimes, you just want to, just need to let people vent for a bit just to calm down. Yeah. Um, and just chill. And then they'll, then they'll be ready. To sleep on it. They say, no, they sleep, no, yeah. go in, sleep on it. Come back. Like not possible in my situation. There we go. <laughs> hmm. Yeah, we, one of the things we're doing, we're going to do tomorrow is around decision making and trying to find the, the best circumstances for you to make better decisions. Yeah. So we're working with a group of product owners and uh, product owners have to make hundreds of decisions every day. Probably don't realise it. Well, yeah. most of us do, but product owners have to make a lot of decisions. And um, everyone will have circumstances where they, they, they generally make better decisions and circumstances where they make worse decisions. And if a lot of people aren't aware of that. Like I know we're very different in that I quite like getting stuff done early in the morning, whereas you're more of a late afternoon person, aren't you? Mm-hmm. So I'll, I'll get a lot of stuff done in my day before 11 o'clock. Yeah. In the afternoons. I'd much prefer to have a, a, an afternoon nap. I've so what my um, web developer, a guy called Tom, lovely guy, Tom Bevan, pretty good. Um, I was talking to him recently about this. He's got uh, I'm going to say personal trainer. Okay. He's either his personal trainer or his coach. I think he, he's also got a coach, okay. a kind of like professional coach. It's not you, by the way. Um, and um, he was talking to me about his. This guy who's been working with him has told him or um, advised him to get up at five o'clock in the morning. Okay. I think it must be a personal trainer to try and adjust his day. So the the idea being that you get up at five, and if, even if you're tired, you just get you get into the mo- that mode of getting up at five and doing something and doing like giving yourself a list of things to do okay. with that sense of achievement of having finished. No, a, a list, clearly a list of things by yeah. 8 o'clock in the morning before anyone else has woken up. Yeah. You've achieved whatever that might be. So some of it might be training or running or lit or going to the gym or whatever, but also some of it's work. So you, you have less guilt about try, working longer into the evening and because you've done achieved so much more in the morning. Okay. 
and you, he says that your body can adjust. It, it's just it's just a matter of time before it adjusts and becomes accustomed to getting up at five o'clock. Okay. And that's weird because at the moment. I think it's something to do with, also to do with that's probably easier during this time of year, which is yes. around kind of May time now. It's getting a bit lighter in the evenings and in the mornings. I was I woke up this morning at five a.m. Okay. Not because I was going to get up, but because the lights in the room were such that I just yeah my body woke up, so I could have got up, but I went to sleep. Mm. You're a three snooze kind of guy. Oh. I never snooze. Three snooze, well, yeah. It's like, no way, I'd be nine, nine, ten snoozes if I could. I usually wake up before the alarm goes off. I set an alarm, but I never See, really need yeah. it. But are you ever really asleep then? Are you a light, light sleeper? Mm, I am a light sleeper. Godzilla woke me up this morning. <laughs> but, um, I was going to say something then. About Stop. getting up at five and doing stuff? No, I do like the idea. That's something that. that motivates me in a way. I love the fact that I'm getting stuff done before people yeah. like you are awake. Yeah. You've achieved a lot more. Mm. I give you a sense like a sense of fulfillment, right? Yeah. And I quite like quiet as well. I mean it's quiet at that time of day. You get a lot done. Yeah. Before the house Just up. hear the birds, you don't hear the cars. It's so nice. at the moment with a new a fairly newborn baby, yeah. that's has that all gone out the window or are you managing to get stuff done still at home? No, I am still getting stuff done, but um, I'm up earlier than normal. So he actually sleeps really, really well. Just we haven't adjusted our routine. So we'll, he'll go to sleep at seven yeah. and wake up at sort of five, six, something like that. Which is a pretty good stretch for a couple of months old. Mm -hmm. You don't need to feed him during the night. But that would be fine if we went to bed early. Yeah, but you don't. But you... we still go to bed sort of 11 o'clock midnight, so we get five hours sleep. Um, so I'm getting up at. Five. Now my wife can go back to sleep, she's pretty good at that. I struggle until I'm awake to go back to sleep. Mm. And they're just lying there, thinking about stuff that I could be doing. Mm. So I would rather get up and get stuff done. It just means that I'm then tired. And I was looking forward to having lots of afternoon naps, because I love an afternoon nap. But I haven't had as many as I would have liked. Unfortunately, you can't do that in a training course. That's what we probably do these our jobs. Well, you would, I would. Yeah. Yeah. I don't know. You could cover me tomorrow. I'm sure we could work that into the, de the curriculum somehow of how one of the learning objectives is based around nap time. Mindfulness. Yeah. Energy levels. But it, so you say about product tennis, but being conscious of when you're making a decision when you're tired. Yeah. That's, that's again, it's that emotional intelligence. But you make more negative awareness of Yes, yeah, that decision fatigue. We talk, yeah. Have we talked about that before? Yeah, I'm um, on a podcast. Possibly. It's worth mentioning again, though. It was um, parole judges, was Parole it? judges, in, yeah. in the US. Now, at the start of the day, they make, it was 75%, so, so about a 75% chance that the, 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 uh, the, the person up for parole, whatever yeah. that, that, that label title would be, getting granted parole. And then as that session went on, the percentage went down and down and down and down and down and down and down. So if you were lucky enough to be up first, you had a much better chance of getting parole if you were up just before the end of the session. Yeah. And then by the end, after the session, the judge would go away and you'd have, have a little rest and you'd have a little snack. And yeah, it's also to do with your hunger levels, isn't it? And he'd come back and he wouldn't be quite as angry and he'd be less tired and he'd be refreshed and the, the chance of parole went up to 75% again. So if you're in a much more negative state of mind because you're tired, because you're hungry, because you're stressed, you generally make a more negative, cynical, short-term decision. This reminds me of, um, this happened recently, we won't name who it was, because that would be bad. Okay. But it was a recent course where somebody fell asleep. Okay. This And it's that classic, um, after pro post lunch slot, yeah. which I think I, I was pulling the I was pulling the post lunch slot on day one, and um, it was a quiet section. Nothing to do with the content. Or no, the nothing presenter. to do with the, with the content of the presenter. But one guy just oh, one guy just drifted off. Yeah. And um, yeah, I don't Did think you I, snoring. I, I, <laughs> luckily it didn't snore. But I think you know, when it, it was enough that somebody else other than me in the group noticed it. They did. Yeah, I can't say. I remember so. Nige, I told this is a story that me and Nige shared ages ago. 
and um, I remember Nigel said that happened to him on Disney and BT once and, he, and <laughs> Nigel used to go around and kick the chair so he'd kick people's chair if they fell asleep I remember he wouldn't mind me saying that because it's it's hard not to take it personally but it's also, also it's got a lot to do with your brain just at that time of day mm. especially in a, in a learning environment yeah kind of needs a break doesn't it maybe that maybe that times is the way forward I am um, so teenagers have different biorhythms yes right? this is something that's, that's been quite publicised a lot recently and how actually teenagers going to school really early is a really bad idea yeah you know, they're much more awake late afternoon in yeah. the evening yeah and their brains just aren't going to soak up as much information if they, when they go in early in the morning. Yeah. My 16-year-old daughter, she loved that study. She, she, she went to school and said, look, scientists say we should be coming to school later. Um, but they didn't agree. I think there's a lot, lot to be said for flexibility. You know, we, we do know a lot more about ourselves than, than we did when we designed things like yeah. the working day and the school yeah. day. I mean, why? Why are you to find? It's still based around an antiquated kind of factory-based day, isn't it? Yeah. The, the factory opens at nine and closes at five. We're kind of clocking in, clocking out, which doesn't work in every in- environment. It's crazy, isn't it? We just do things because that's the way they're done. Yeah. I suppose that's one of the benefits, really, of, of um, globally dispersed teams, is that it does give some, and I always used to encourage some degree of flexibility on working hours, to, and you get more overlap. Yeah. You, you adjust working hours to when people, a lot of the developers I used to work with used to enjoy working evenings, and they, so they'd go home and they'd carry on, yeah. because they could all dial in remotely from home or whatever. Dial in. Dial in. in. <laughs> 50, on their 56k modems. Using uh, their uh, RSA IDs or whatever they're called. Yeah, RSA. Remote secure access. Yeah. Those are the days, mate. No, well, they were. And they weren't. <laughs> they weren't, they weren't, yeah. Rose tinted glasses and all that. Rose tinted pint. Yeah. Oh, yeah. <laughs> Um, but yeah, in terms of, it amazes me how much we, we say about the brain and struggling with tiredness. How many projects, the horror stories that I used to get involved with, where long hours was just was pun- was pun- was punishing. It was like not not really for me, and because I wasn't probably doing some of the more critical coding or the critical release, but making changes in production in the middle of the night. It's never a good time to do that. No. <laughs> when you're tired, yeah. when you've already been working five, six, seven, eight weeks. Mm. It's never a good time to do it. No, it's definitely, definitely a big link there. With, uh, it's, it's, a, it's a self, it's not self-fulfilling, but self-reinforcing loop, isn't it? You make more mistakes, therefore you need to work longer to fix them, but you're going to be more tired. Consequently, make more mistakes. Yeah. Yeah. Yes. So what's the cure? What's the, what are you going to do? How are you going to cure your sleep? What's your, um, what's your strategy? Well, so I need some time off. And my problem is it takes there's quite a lag time before I can yeah, free myself up because I'm booked up so far in advance that those commitments that I thought I could do, I have to see them through really. Um, some of them, some of them I could change, but uh, yeah, I think generally leave a, quite a bit of time in the summer where I can just relax and watch some cricket and go to the seaside with family and things. So I think I'm, I'm looking forward to that where I think reset a little bit really. I've just come back from a weekend off, as, as you well know, but just took a long weekend and it was one of the... I think one of the things that increases stress these days careful, is, for me, is 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 the planning, is is the is the calendar. It's seeing, it's trying to find a gap. So we we had a weekend off. We went to Centre Park for the weekend, and we literally we didn't 
we compared it to when we first went to Centre Parks where we scheduled oh. ourselves to the hilt basically we had something to do with the kids every hour yeah, yeah, yeah. had to get from one part of the park to the other and this this time we went for four, four days because we live locally to it it's not too far away and we just said we're not going to we don't know what's going to happen we had a rough timings that we needed to get in and get out but we just said see what see whatever happens and it was really nice just not to have a schedule to work to, yeah. just to completely free ourselves of time, times to be somewhere didn't have to check our phones for where we had to be or where did we had you to do stuff kids. we did stuff but we decided to do it on this on the spur of the moment okay did, did that restrict what you could do were there things that you couldn't do because you hadn't planned not really we we investigated a few things that we turned down, but we didn't. There was nothing that we'd chosen to do late, but then I had to forfeit because we. Okay. But that was probably one of the benefits. It wasn't that busy, so we didn't really feel we lost out. But yeah, it was just, and the kids really appreciated it because we just did stuff, played cards. You know, you don't have to schedule that in. Just sit and play cards no. with the kids. That's the kind of thing. And the kids come back and said that, that they really enjoyed it. So it's like the card games to play. Uh, sevens. Yeah. Which one of the sevens? No. So, um, oh, we'll have to play it. Is that an agile thing? No. <laughs> it's, uh, well, you, you do, you put in a round, but you yeah. have to put cards down in sequence with four suits. Okay. And you have to fill the card. You, you used to play them. And we played, um, what else did we play? Three blind mice. Oh, yeah, I'm going to need to educate you on card games, mate. And as my daughter, uh, my daughter said, in her words, strip down naked, which isn't called strip down naked. It's called strip jack naked. Okay. But she calls it strip down naked, um, which is funny. So yeah, but the ki- it's, we've told the kids as well, no TV, no Xbox, back to basics. You know, woods, trees, card games, barbecues. It's nice. It's nice to strip it right back. It's good. And I felt better, I feel rejuvenated. A little good. One of us has to be. Hmm. One of us is on the ball. Yeah. You're looking strong from carrying me all this time. Strong shoulders, mate. Yeah. Um, what else is going on? It's Agile Austin at the moment, isn't it? It is, but we should no, kind of... Agile Austin. No, Austin. Scrum Gathering Austin. Yeah, yeah. so while we, well, as we record this, we don't know when this will go out, but as we record now, time difference was about five hours, isn't it? So they're in kind of mid part of day two, which I assume is open space. I think it's open space. After uh, we threw it away in London, uh, they brought it back for Austin, so weren't we, weren't we wrong? Um, so yeah, they're doing that today, day, day two or three. So hello to Nigel, I'm sure we've text, texted Nigel, but he's over there at the moment. Cheers, Nigel. Representing yeah. the, the, the podcast. Hopefully passing the, passing the good word on. Um, I hear the keynote went well. Mm. Like I, I think I liked. It. So if you didn't know, the keynote was Dan, Daniel Pink. Um, Daniel Pink, author of Drive and, and, and a couple of other books. And yeah. He's got a new book out as well. Called When. But I didn't realise he was um, some kind of. Wasn't he a writer for Al Gore? Al Gore, speechwriter. That's right. I only read that book recently. He's got a very. He's got, he did a good TV show as well. We don't take this. Yeah, it was basically about psychology. You know, it's like social psychology experiments. Mm. Um, what it was called now, but it was it was quite good, quite interesting. But it's nice that I know from the tweets I've seen that um, Howard Sublet, chief product owner of the Scrum Alliance, has been uh, re-emphasising that the Scrum Alliance is now trying to maximise impact not revenue and I think that's a, it's a good sign when they get a speaker like that at a major global event like that that's a not cheap I would imagine no I, and that's what it fits. that's what these gatherings should be they should be inspiring they should be great speakers something that we tried to change in London I kind of think we did a job there I think we we, um, we started that process yeah. moving of trying to bring in bigger budgets and um, bigger 
bigger speakers, better speakers, hmm. especially for keynotes and for kind of yeah. inspiring talks. So I'm going to partially, in a limited way, take some credit for that. Good for you. And you should, mate. You were part of that. You were part of that too. <coughs> should give yourself some credit now and again. It is. Pat yourself on the back. One for our patrons, eh? Yeah. Yes. Do you know whether there were any other sessions, like any other speakers apart from him that they brought in from outside the community? There was um, the inventor of the hashtag. Okay. It sounds like some kind of fictional, like if I was on a game show and I was trying to be funny about my job or my, my claim to fame. Yeah. That's what I think I'd say. In two lies, one truth or something. Yeah. But apparently there was a man who invented the hashtag from a Twitter, I assume from a Twitter angle. And I think he's one of the keynote. Okay. And what's the do you know the message then? No. Okay. I don't know anything about that one. But I think that, I don't think I perhaps I dreamt that, I'm not sure. <laughs> Be a funny dream. Yeah. But I don't know, so I assume that's one of maybe today's keynote or I don't know who the third one would be. They're just going for three, three mm -hmm. keynotes. Maybe it's a surprise one, I don't know. Um, yeah, so that's in Austin at the moment. Chris oh, Messina, inventor of the Twitter hashtag. There you go. The former Google designer who first proposed that Twitter adopt the hashtag, as it was called, has explained why he never bothered to apply for a patent on the idea. Well, can you do that? Can you pat patent a hashtag? No. Someone patented the Let's Get Ready to Rumble thing, didn't they? Let's get ready to rumble. Yeah. What, the words? Or the, that, the, that, that, yeah. When someone enters the ring and stuff. It's Brucey, every, Brucey Buffer. Who is it? Michael Buffer. Every, every, every time someone says it. that, someone gets money. No way. Yeah. It's crazy, isn't it? Unbelievable, Jeff. <laughs> I'm going to see if I can find the schedule. Do you say schedule? I got caught on this today. Do you say schedule or schedule? I say schedule. Mm. Schedule's American, isn't it? I don't know. I, I, I caught when I was editing the last podcast, I caught, caught myself saying schedule. And it was immediately got followed by someone saying schedule. And I felt a bit silly. do feel silly. Mm. It's not mobile friendly. It's got my website. Yeah, the gathering the gathering website is not not friendly to me, for mobiles. So that's that's dead. All right. Um, what else is going on? What else is going on, mate? Nothing. Nothing really. It's for shit, isn't it? <laughs> Anything else on your mind? Yeah. What was the stuff coming out of our product owners troubles today? Oh yeah, what did they talk about? <laughs> Stories? Storytelling. We were telling some story. It's amazing, so we, we play with some story cubes today. So it's kind of end the, act, end the day with a bit of an activity around that just to emphasize product owners as storytellers rather than story writers. And then there was some genuine kind of joyous laughter. Yeah. Yeah, they, they, I, I think they were quite hesitant to start with, weren't they? So, like, I but think they really enjoyed it. People, those people today generally think it was a bit childish until they did it. So they were happy to go with the idea that you're not going to be ridiculed or judged. Mm. And genuinely enjoyed it. So it was kind of a nice way to finish. Yeah. On a positive. Yeah. Um, we were asked, we were asked some questions. There was a lot of questions about stories and how we were asked about whether. Um, no, uh, it was just a sort of misinterpretation of whether it was, what was the difference in a story and a task. Basically. Oh yeah, yeah, and that idea of you know, developers breaking down a story into smaller stories, but they're not valuable. They're just they're tasks, like integration tasks or something like that, which isn't a story. It's not valuable to the to the user or the product owner or anything like that. Um, and how stories have become very very mechanical and solution focused rather than exploratory. 
Well, you said it today when you said that the worry is that Agile is becoming used to the, it's synonymous, synonymous with the writing, the task, the activity of writing, the user tool. Mm. And I worry that maybe even a lot of product owners in that room today you talk about being tired, you talk about being stressed. That's not the best use, in my view, of a product owner's time, is writing user stories. No. And if I'd that's rather what talk about one story than write three. Yeah, if you've if you're spending, if you're tired from writing stories, it's time to start questioning why you're writing. Yeah. Well, we're also talking about whether. Oh, that's right. So we, somebody asked us whether um, how we, what, what our opinions were about sort of internal stories from, say, marketing. Would you write a story from the perspective of someone from marketing? Yeah. Um, I said, well, yeah, yeah, of course you could. Yeah. But equally, another way of looking at that is that the marketing aspect is part of the definition of done. Yeah. So, <coughs> and not everything in your product backlog needs to be stories. No. So we're, it's become we're, a bit of an obsession. Yeah. A bit of an industry. A similar kind of, yeah, sort of people just grab onto something, don't they? Yeah. A desire for certainty and, and standardization and, and closure yeah. is, is too big. Living in that uncertainty of should it be this, should it be that, maybe we could do it like this, maybe we could do it like that. Maybe we could make our decisions yeah. at the time. It's, it's too scary for some people to to deal with. So, but you, you, mean, you made a good point today as well that those types of acceptance criteria, kind of objective, testable criteria, are great if you know what the outcome should be. Yeah. But oh, yeah, we're talking about given when then. We? Yeah. Which is a very like so you said, a very simplistic domain. Yeah. Or an obvious domain. Then you can do that. If you know what, automate it, but if you know what the outcomes are. So if it's like if you're testing algorithms, if you're testing calculations where there is a known expected outcome, then fine, it works. But if you're testing or if you're trying to experiment, hypothesize, probe, mm. you don't know what the outputs are yet. No. So it's, it's harder. It's a lot more it's a lot more difficult to test. Uh, definitively, objectively, yeah, in a data-driven way, maybe, perhaps. It's a lot more subjective and interpretative. Interpretative is that a word? Yeah, yeah. Um, but if that's if that's the environment you're in, where you can't predict the future, you can't know what it is until you see it, or know what it isn't until you see it. Then yeah, it needs to be a lot more exploratory. But that, that was that, that was my kind of frustration with it. In that, I, obviously, I wasn't there, and they weren't my intention. They weren't my invention. But I believe the intention of stories was to be that collaborative exploration and emergence, rather than trying to predict things in advance and write yeah. them down. Yeah. So yeah, that, that was interesting. Um, and we also talked about. How value is not a not a one-dimensional thing. It's a multifaceted com concept. Yeah, no, made of multiple different things. So you, value isn't just about am I making money? It could be am I reducing risk? And am I gaining new customers? Am I getting a return on my investment or am I reducing the technical debt that, that, that could all be value um, and knowing what facets make up value and serve which customers and which users and which personas is a big part of the product owner's job mm -hmm. any connection with tiredness there um, other than the fact it was the, we were teaching that at the end of the day connection with tiredness I think Yes. <laughs> Go on, make, no, a, make a leap. So, the, um, when you're tired, well, when you're stressed, when under pressure, yes. you revert to what you know. Yes. You revert to your defaults, your type. We all have our defaults, we all have our preferences, we all have our sort of lazy mode, if yeah. you like, where you're not really not putting the, the mental effort into it. Uh, and you autopilot. Yeah, autopilot. Yeah, autopilot, yeah. And I think autopilot generally defers to the more simplistic, yeah. simple, robust, rather than resilient, creative, exploratory, collaborative. And so 
in most situations, when we're tired, we're, we'll take probably an inappropriate response. Yeah. The easiest, quickest response. Yeah. And when you when your when your work relies on collaboration, collaboration requires energy. It requires positive interpretation. It is exhausting as well. Yeah, it is. It's not us. I would hesitate to say that it's. I don't know if you can do it day in, day out, sustainably in a cre fully creative space. You need to slow your brain down to different yeah. paces. So yeah, trying to collaborate on an empty tank is difficult. Mm. You generally think more negatively of people, yeah. which is exacerbated if you're not physically with them. Mm. So yeah, tiredness will, will reduce your interpretation of things. We were talking about this on holiday just this weekend with my with my family. And we were trying to we were talking about obviously families we we know each other quite well as you know. My lad Owen, who's uh, seven, works on the same. He works on a hangry basis, so if he's hungry, he doesn't um, shout and scream. But he go he becomes quite irritable and quite grumpy. He, it's all sulky. He will just shut down. It's a bit like me. Sabrina, my wife, works, doesn't get hangry, but she, she struggles when she's tired. Tiredness is the thing where she's not had enough sleep. And also, she's cold. Okay. So, she generally struggles, the body and, and brain doesn't work well, decision making mm -hmm. on a coldness basis. Yeah. Which I thought was interesting. So, your environment kind of is so, can affect you so much. Definitely. More than you realise. No, the coldness is down to room temperature as well. Well, yeah, you, it's your body going into protect mode, isn't it? Yeah. It's protecting your vital organs, taking blood away from the extremities. And you've mentioned this again in other courses about the ceiling height, mm -hmm. how much that can have a bearing on higher ceilings expand your thinking, mm -hmm. whilst lower ce ceilings increases focus. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Vitamin D, sunlight, fresh air, that all helps. Yeah. Oxygen tanks. Maybe we should have oxygen tanks. Oh, that meant right. Oh, I, I walked past. Um, I was in a shopping mall yesterday, and I walked past. Uh, basically, it was a drip, an intravenous drip. Yeah, with oxygen. No, it was oxygen vitamin. Bars. Oh, really? vitamin water. Oh, really? so, you, so you could have like, vitamin B, vitamin C, vitamin D, just intravenously and I know people there, there are services out there where if you've got a hangover they'll come and yes IV drip the thing, yeah. to, 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 some fluids yeah. to rehydrate you which um, works apparently yeah. yeah and maybe that's something that's something I need I need to invest in I, I want to do that so I don't do needles but I could do an <laughs> oxygen tank that might work that's worth investing in can you buy can you buy those can you just get another oxygen tanks I don't know, I have to a bot uh, chemicals lorry just comes to dark. Yeah, anything on the dark web, can't you? <laughs> so I'm told. The dark web. Anyway, we've talked for long enough. Yeah, I've got two points. points. So, um, yeah, thank you for listening. Um, just to remind you, so if you want to become a, a patron of the podcast, go to www.patreon.com mm -hmm. forward slash the Agile Podcast. Yep. More details on there and all the content that you can get access to if you'd like to buy us a pint. But other than that, mate, thank you very much. Cheers. See you soon. Ta-da. Cheers, guys.